What is going on, Misfit Nation? Welcome to another episode of the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Matt, the Misfit, and we're going to go over AEW Collision for July 8, 2023. I apologize for not doing Raw, uh, not Raw, but uh, Dynamite and SmackDown this week. I just didn't have the energy to do it, but I'm all for talking about this uh, really good show of Dynamite. We had an instant classic tag team match between FTR and... And a Bullet Club Gold. We've seen a humper of a match between CM Punk and Samoa Joe, where P- CM Punk finally defeated Samoa Joe. And it is going to the finals of the Owen Hart Tournament. we also seen Ricky Starks advance to the Owen Hart Tournament finals. We'll talk about that much, much more. We'll talk about what happened with Julia. Uh, not Ju- well, we'll talk about with Julia. Uh, but she uh, won the strong championship. We'll talk about that, though, uh, tomorrow. Because uh, tomorrow we're going to bring back... Uh, the wrestling roundup show because there's things that happened this week that I want to talk about, including Stardom's Midsummer Champion show. Uh, very interesting results coming out of that show as well. The Independence Day uh, shows from New Japan Strong, where we just seen I just mentioned Julia defeating Willow Nightingale to become the New Japan Strong Women's Champion. Eddie Kings defeating uh, Kenta to win the Open Never Open Weight Championship. Uh, we also uh, saw tonight, I watched the match. I'm going to actually talk about it here on this show. Because it's one match. Utami Aishida defeating Billy Starks in her GCW debut. That was the only reason I watched the show, just for that match. And then after the match, I quit <laughs> the program. Um, but we'll talk about that and much, much more tomorrow on the Wrestling Roundup uh, show. We'll talk about that. Dynamite. Uh, news on Dynamite as well, and or news on Blood and Guts, rather, and SmackDown. So, yeah, so stay tuned for that. But this is AEW Collision. You can find me on social media, Misfit Wrestling Podcast. Basically everywhere you can find me on Twitter, Misfit Wrestling Pod. No, no, Wrestle, Misfit Wrestling TV. No, Misfit Wrestle TV, excuse me, on the Twitters, on the Instagram, Misfit Wrestling Pod, and I'm on Threads. You can find me on there at Misfit Wrestling Pod because I've everyone's enjoying Threads, so I decided to join Threads as well. Uh, but you also can find the other audio platforms: Spotify, Amazon Music, iHeartRadio, po- Google Podcast, Stitcher, Audible, and Pandora, and then right here on YouTube.com/slash at Misfit Wrestling Podcast. We are close to our 100th episode. Uh, we're this is episode 95 as if you guys haven't dealt here, uh, we are, what is it, four or five more episodes? Yeah, five more episodes away from episode 100. What uh, episode 100 is going to be? I don't know. It might actually be, you know, you know, it could be anything here. Actually, I can tell you when episode 100 is going to be. Episode 100 is going to be next Monday. Assuming I continue doing my stuff it's gonna be next monday june july the 17th um which i'm very excited uh, to talk about. like i don't know what else i'm gonna do for that show who knows i may stream that episode of the the show i don't know i might stream my review who knows i'll let you guys know on that whole front uh i'll have to buy myself a camera uh because i don't have one unfortunately because the camera i had broke but we'll, we'll, we'll find out we'll figure out what we're gonna do for episode 100 who knows? But in the meantime, if you're on the YouTube channel, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, comment down below. Let me know what you thought about AEW Collision because I thought Collision was a great show. And and there are much, much more. We're going to talk about it right here. If the show opened with not a match. No, 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 no. Let's see. The show opened. Uh, we, you had the, the Saturday night main event type of uh, promos, which I thought, which I'm glad they're doing. They, they should keep doing it. Uh, they started doing it not last week, but the week before. I didn't want, unfortunately, I didn't watch Collision last week because I don't know. I just, I don't know what I don't know what it was. I was whatever reason I wasn't watching Collision last week. I have no idea, but I didn't. But the show opened with CM Punk. He came out there, basically talked about this being the biggest match of his career. Not really a, the truth, uh, but he's basically, you know, talks about the whole thing with, with the 
Samoa Joe praises uh, Owen Hart uh, and talks about his nine. It's been the first, it'll be his first match with Samoa Joe one on one in nineteen or eighteen years rather, and the crowd in Regina, uh, Canada, did not boost the impact. So I'm going to assume that outside of Toronto and wherever they're going to be for California when they go back to California. They're going to cheer for CM Punk. <laughs> I, t- I tweeted out, I think, I, I tweeted out, not all of Canada hates CM Punk. <laughs> so I think it's funny. But, but uh, show open with the the first semifinals match of the Owen Hart, Owen Hart Cup Men's Tournament, which is Ricky Starks and Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, Powerhouse Hobbs comes out with uh, a uh, old heart inspired gear, which was I thought was a nice touch here. Um, but they go to commercial break before the bell rings. Uh, they come back, bell rings. They lock up. Hobbs throws Starks around the ring. He throws Starks into the corner. Uh, gets hit in the stomach. Starks hits, hits clothesline on powerhouse. Hobbs. Hobbs is out of the ring. Q T Marshall, his little fucking weirdo self. Gets on the ring apron uh, to distract somebody. Uh, but he hits Starks. Starks is down. Uh, E.T. Marshall chucks, chucks him out with the, the route, without the referee looking. Uh, Starks is back into the ring or is in the ring corner. Uh, he hits Hobbs in the stomach. He tries to clothesline. Uh, Starks tries to clothesline Hobbs, but uh, gets pushed down. Hobbs suplexes. Uh, Starks, Starks tries to fight back, but gets thrown around and back into the corner. They go to commercial break. Uh, after that, Hobbs reverses Starks into a in a uh, reverse bear. Stops has stops has Starks in a reverse bear hug as well. I'm trying to get out of here. Starks gets his second uh, wind here. Uh, he then kicks Hobbs into the gut uh, or lower med section, whatever you want to call it. Uh, throws Hobbs back into the corner. He keeps clotheslining him. Uh, Starks hits a power bomb. Goes for the main. Gets a two count. Starks botches a springboard DDT. That looks scary. Uh, 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 Hobbs was able to hit a spine buster. QT Marshall again distracting the referee. Uh, Hobbs is upset with QT. Uh, Starks knocks it into Hobbs, sending QT down, and Hobbs uh, Hobbs gets hit with a spear. Starks goes for the pin, and Starks advances to the finals next week uh, to face either Samoa Joe or CM Punk. Um, after the match, they argue. It seems like they're kind of uh, uh, doing something here. Not Hobbs knocks him down. He's upset at uh, Kuto for getting involved. Aaron Solo comes in. Hobbs hits him with a spine buster. Harley Cameron comes in and begs Hobbs to uh, off and Hobbs leaves. So it looks like they're going, I guess they're going to turn Power Hobbs back in, I guess, into a baby face, which I'm not opposed to. Get him the old fuck away from QT Marshall. Uh, the only thing QT Mar- relevance of QT Marshall is he fucking tooled uh, human waste of a person, uh, the human the human waste known as uh, Raj Gary. Uh which is probably the best thing. It was the only thing of Hugh T. Marshall's I ever liked. So, there's that. Uh, Miro cuts a promo. Talk about his double-jointed hot wife. And about the gods and whatnot. I'm more interested in this double-jointed hot wife he keeps talking about. Because uh, uh, I'm pretty sure she isn't doing anything wrestling-wise. So, why not just bring her in? Anywho. Uh, then we got Julie Hart coming out here. Uh, well, not yet. She she she's about to have a match. Uh, it was announced on Twitter earlier. Uh, if you are able to see the Twitter at, the, at this point in time, uh, by Tony Khan that uh, due to the match she, Willow Nightingale, the amazing match he, she had with Mil- Willow Nightingale, uh, Willow Nightingale had with Julia, uh, she was unable to compete. Uh, a little banged up, so we pushed the match back for next week. On Rampage, even though it's going to be taped after, it's a whole 
yeah, it, it's happening on Rampage next week. The the quarterfinals match between or the semifinals match between Willow Guy and Gale and uh Athena. Athena comes out, tells that she ruined her collision debut. The match is moved to next Friday, it's Rampage, and they argue him her and Tony Khan. Not Tony Khan, Tony Shivani. Uh we got a name drop of Julia too by by Athena, which again they're they keep throwing that name out there, Julia. I'm almost certain at some point Julia's gonna come into AEW do a few matches. Uh, a match with Athena was gonna is gonna fucking go fire, and I can't wait for that. Uh, but then Julia Hart comes out with Brody King beside her. Uh, she's faces a local talent called a Bambi Hall, uh, and she just beats her ass. The matches didn't even last very long here. Uh, she slaps kicks on her. Uh, Bambi gets some offense on the Heartless Lock. Or the heartless lock is applied and baby taps out the match is over pretty quickly uh julia uh took longer uh, julia come out than the match the match was like didn't go very very long here uh after the match we had a promo package from malachi black who we did confirm on a podcast which i don't remember the podcast's name said that uh he is an exclusive he and the house of black are exclusive now to uh, collision, so he not joined CM Punk on that exclusive list of people who are in that show now. Uh, and he sends a message towards Andrade El Idolo, talks about why he took El, uh, Andrade's mask, mask, not masks, it's not plural. Uh, uh, Andrade is in, in, later interviewed by uh, likes the, the, of course, the daughter of DDP, says he's not a coward, and some other stuff and there's that uh this match how do i talk about this next match this is ftr bullet club gold aew tag team eliminator championship match here uh if, if ftr if bullet club gold get a win here they then get a uh shot at the aew up at uh, a feature shot at the aew tag team championship this match was this match was incredible uh i feel like because Willow Nightingale's match with Athena was cut from the show and pushed till next to, to Rampage next week, I think more time was added to this match in particular because uh, this match was awesome. Match starts with Jay White and Dax Harwood. They lock up. Harwood pushes White into the corner. Harwood goes for the pin. Jay White was able to kick out. Uh, Jay White then tags in Juice Robinson while... Uh, Harwood then takes in Cash Wheeler. They lock up. Cash pulls uh, Juice's hair. Uh, Wheeler has Juice into a submission hold. Robinson was able to clothesline uh, Willie, uh, not Willie, Uta, Cash Wheeler. <laughs> there's there's like two Wheelers on this entire roster. You got Willie Uta and Cash Wheeler. And they're both spelled the same way, which is even funnier. Uh, Jay White gets tagged back in. He punches Cash. Then Cash gets thrown out to the ring. He runs back. He runs back in, and all four of them are in the ring. They just going at it here, uh, back and forth. Both FTR and Bullet Club Gold suplexes to both Robinson and Jay White. They go to commercial break. Uh, they come back from break. Jay White gets tagged in. Oh, they're doing that whole picture in picture thing anyway. Still, but um, Jay White gets tagged in. Uh, or no, Jay White tags in Juice Robinson. Jay White was already the legal uh, competitor in the match at the point. Uh, he attacks, uh, I must call it Jason Harwood, <laughs> Dax Harwood. Uh, he throws him into the corner. Robinson goes for a, gets a, gets a one and a, one and a half count, which again, not slight, not much, not much of a two, but half of a two, if that makes sense. Uh, Dax slaps him, ch- uh, chest slaps him, and tosses him. Wheeler. Uh, gets tagged in. Cash Wheeler does. Uh, Cash tries to twice for the pin, but later uh, puts Juice into the corner. Wheeler is in the corner now. Uh, and Jay White is gets tagged into the ring. He hits a uh, backbreaker before he gets uh, a shoulders to the gut. Jay White has uh, Cash Wheeler locked in, in, in a... In a uh, in a Moodle lock, uh, which looked, uh, the bridge on that Moodle lock looked, looked 
Really, really good. Uh, Dax came in, hit Jay White on the chest. White tries to suplex Wheeler, uh, Cash Wheeler, but uh, Cash tries to uh, win with a roll up, but the referee wasn't paying attention. Uh, Robinson gets back into the ring. He quickly tags in Jay White. Uh, Wheeler, uh, Cash Wheeler is fighting both Robinson and Jay White. Uh, Cash Wheeler throws Robinson down to the out, outside the ring, and Jay White does the same to him. Uh, Jay White is the only one in the ring, and he goes to, back to picture to picture to come back. Jay White, a Cash Wheeler in the ring. A lot going on. Uh, Wheeler gets a two count, hits a German suplex, which looked beautiful, by the way. Uh, White goes for, gets it, gets hit with a frog splash. And a super a superplex. I almost call it a super, a super kick for some reason. Uh, but kicks out. Uh, Jay White throws Hardwood into uh, out uh, out of the ring, rather. Uh, hits a suplex on Cash Wheeler. Dax was able to save Wheeler from a Blade Runner. Uh, tries to, White tries to win with a roll-up. Ta- uh, Dax tags himself in. Everyone is down. Uh, Robinson tags taps basically tags up his himself back into the match. Uh Jay White tags himself in after a uh after Harwood throws him into a into uh Jay White. Or, sorry. Robinson tags himself in after Harwood throws him into White. Uh double a double suplex it looks like I'm assuming. Uh it's what my note says here. But uh Harwood saves Wheeler Yuta. Or not Wheeler Yuta. Cash Wheeler. I don't know why I called Wheeler. I said I, I would call him Wheeler Yuta earlier, too, which is even funnier. Uh, rebound, power bomb, which is that Dax Harwood thing that he likes to hit. Uh, Jay White was able to kick out. Lots of uh, a white, a white kicking. White, Jay White looks like a million bucks in this entire match here. Uh, Juice Robinson runs in, hits Lariat. Jay White then hits Blair Brunner onto, onto Cash Wheeler. Uh, it's now just Jay White and Dax Harwood in the ring. They keep going back and forth with chops. Uh, Juice Robinson tags himself in, and Harwood thinks that uh, Jay White is the illegal man, but uh, Cash, or not Cash Wheeler, Juice Robinson uses this advantage to get the pin onto Dax Harwood, and they end up picking when getting a championship match, which is set up for next week. It's going to be... Uh, a two out of three falls match for the AEW Tag Team Titles. FTR defending against Bullet Club Gold. This match was was incredible. I like me just talking about it doesn't do any justice. I, if, if there's a match on the show, I would go back and watch this one and the main event. That uh, that is it. That's all you need to do. Like this match was incredible, and I cannot wait for their Falls County Anywhere match next week on on Collision. A segment, then we have Christian Cage and Sean Spears find out that uh, next Saturday night is going to be, I believe, Battle of the Belts. Luchasaurus will defend his TNT Championship against Sean Spears on uh, uh, Battle of the Belts, whatever number it is. I will not be reviewing Battle of the Belts because I just have no reason to review Battle of the Belts. So, if I, I'll talk about Battle of the Belts maybe. If I feel like it on on Sunday's podcast next weekend, so who knows? Um, then we go to FTR. Like I said, they just set up that whole match with with Bullet Club Global next week in a two out three falls match. That should be a lot of fun. Scorpio Sky is out next for his match with Accident Mac Action Andrade. Uh, it's the first time we've seen Scorpio Sky in over a year. They go back and forth. Uh, Andra, uh, Andrade. Uh, Attacking a guy uh, outside the ring, he throws him back in. Action Andretti goes for the pin. Andretti has been taking over this match until Sky counters him with a move. Uh, hits the TKO to get the win, and Scorpio Sky gets a very quick win on to Action Andretti. And then we got the main event: Samoa Joe, CM Punk in the semifinals of the Owen Hart Men's Tournament. This was. Actually, really fun. I enjoyed this man of it here. This is the first time Joe and CM Punk have had a singles match in over 18 years. Their last one was in Ring of Honor. Uh, their, t- their 
It's uh, see. So Joe, I believe, has two wins over him, and then the last one was a draw. Uh, I, the story here is Punk has never beaten Samoa Joe, so um, the crowd are are waiting for this. Been waiting for this match here. Uh, they lock up. Punk chops Joe, uh, but they lock up again. They do the test the strength stuff, which is I, I kind of don't. I'm I'm over I'm kind of over that spot in wrestling if I'm being honest here. Punk has Joe in a headlock. Crowd is chanting for Punk. Which, again, remember we were told that that they're gonna boo CM Punk everywhere else, but in but in Chicago. No 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 no. CM Punk said that's not happening. <laughs> Uh, Punk hit a few chops, falls off the top rope. Uh, Joe kicks and hits Punk over the head. Uh, a few right hands to Punk. Go Samo, does does go Samoa Joe, who is now in the corner. Punk gets a mob fence, but goes down again. They go to commercial break. Uh, once they come back, uh, Joe is getting still getting the upper hand on, on, on CM Punk. Punk's mouth is bleeding, which, we, again, we're not sure how that happened. Uh, but Punk gets a few hits in on Joe. Joe knees tends to go out. Uh, Joe has Punk in a headlock. They both go down. Punk now gets out of the hold that he that Joe had him in. Punk tries to kick Joe, but Joe hits a few chops. Punk hits the, some of the running knee strikes in the corner that he's known to be doing, his famous knee running knee thing. Punk. Goes to the top rope, hits the Randy Savage elbow drop. Punk goes for a, a pin. Joe kicks out. Punk tries to go for another, goes for a GTS. He, went, he tried a few times, uh, but fails. He was never able to hit the GTS on Joe in this match. Uh, Joe locks in a submission hold, uh, breaks out of it, uh, do a kick out kick, but, Punk, but Joe was able to kick out. A, a knockout kick, sorry, not kick out kick. Joe kicks out of that. Punk hits a neck breaker, but Joe tries to hit Muscle Buster. Uh, and Punk was able to win with the roll up. And CM Punk is now going to the finals to face Ricky Starks next week. Uh, and CM Punk is finally, after 18 years, was able to defeat uh, Samoa Joe. Uh, after the match, Punk and Joe stare down after the crowd is chanting for Owen Hart. Uh, Joe. Shakes Punk's hand because Punk has his hand out for respect. But Joe hits, puts in the coquina clutch. Uh, he has, he's over, oh, uh, he's mad about the whole thing. Like, come on, we saw that happening. FTR comes out here after Samoa Joe tries to grab a chair to help up Punk. Stark, uh, uh, Starks, Ricky Starks comes out and to stare down CM Punk, and that's how. Collision went off the air. So I thought again, I thought Collision uh, was a really good show. Uh, uh, I thought Collision last week, not last week, the week before. The, the first two episodes of Collision were great. I've heard nothing. I've, I heard last week's Collision was, was really fun. Uh, but Collision, is, Collision just it feels so much different than Dynamite, and I love it. It's just so much different, and like... It's it's just different, and and that's what I like. I like the fact that we have a different show than Dynamite. Because Dynamite, oh, listen, Dynamite was all right, you know, all right show. I'll talk about Dynamite tomorrow on the podcast. But uh, the collision just feels like different. There's not they're not cram, they're not trying to cram like two hundred things into a, two hours within a two hour time span. Like that's not what they do. I wish there'd be. I wish WWE would do that with 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 Star, well not Star Wars with SmackDown and 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 uh, what the hell's the other show they have Raw, um, where they're not trying to cram, or mainly SmackDown where they're not trying to cram like seven hundred different things in one episode. Like I don't need to like I don't need to see six hundred recaps of the fucking Bloodline shit. Have the one segment with the blonde line and do not mention or show them for the rest of the night. I don't need to know what happened. Like, like all right, for example, if they do a segment where, I don't know, I'll, I'll just use the name out here. If they use 
All right, so let's say they did, they did the whole Shane and Baszler thing, right, with Ronda Rousey again on SmackDown, right? And it happened on SmackDown. They'd be showing it, right? I'm like, not even five minutes after it happened, they would replay it. It's like, well, we would like to talk, take you back to what just, we just, just transpired. I'm like, we don't need to see it. We just saw it. You know, things like that. I We don't see that on Collision. Um. They go right to the next thing, and they move on with the rest of the show, and they let things breathe, like the like the tag the the tag team title not the title match the tag team uh, eliminator match between FTR and and, and Bullet Club. Oh, they let that shit breathe. Punk and Joe, they let that shit breathe. Um, you know, they were they were able to cram things, and it just the show goes by fast. Collision goes by fast. SmackDown, not so much. Raw never goes by fast. Uh, you know, Dynamite feels like it goes by fast, but again, they're cramming like 700 things into a two-hour time uh, frame, and they don't need to be doing that. But other than that, you know, like I said, Collision just feels like a different show. I prefer Kevin Kelly and Nigel McGuinness over, and I, I, I nothing against Excalibur or Kaz or Tony Giovanni. Just, you know... They're not, you know, you just don't have Excalibur taking over the fucking broadcast booth. Uh, first of all, you have Tony Giovanni, who is supposed to be, who is more of a lead guy than he was a color commentator on the, on there. Taz will speak about things, but he, you know, I just, I just prefer the collision commentator. As a whole, collision as a, as a presentation and as, it just feels better. It just feels different to me. Uh, but yeah, but Collision was great. I enjoyed Collision this week. Um, hopefully next, starting Monday, we're going to get back into this whole, the whole, uh, flow of things doing Raw, NXT, uh, Raw, not Raw, not NXT, Raw, Dynamite, uh, SmackDown and Collision. Um, and again, for weeks, I don't cover, cover Collision. I'll get, we'll probably try to bring back the, it's not going to be a weekly thing. Like I said, on the first episode of the Wrestling Roundup show. Uh, it's just going to be every now and then whenever I can do it. But yeah, that was Collision. I enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about Collision in whatever comment section you can find it in. Doesn't matter to me. So, you know, all that good stuff here. Uh, one more thing before I go. I want to talk about uh, GCW, not the actual show, because I didn't watch the actual show. I waited until... Uh, Utami, Aishishida, uh, wrestled Billy Starks. That match was actually really, really fun. Uh, uh, Utami, uh, who's on a small excursion here in the United States, going to be doing three. She did, She's doing three dates here for GCW. Uh, one's GACW, but it's, it's still the same fucking thing. Uh, hell, she'll be doing, she did one tonight. I think she's going to be here tomorrow as well. And then next weekend, she's going to be wrestling somebody else and i don't remember who it is but um yeah the crowd was taken to her you know already um and she's made a presence felt she looked like a star she's always gonna be looking like a star uh and i'm very happy that she's gonna be able to do this uh and get some more juices flowing until uh she gets ready to compete in the five star grand prix uh but yeah uh, but that's the only small thing I wanted to throw in here at the end of this podcast here. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow on spot on the other audio outlet exclusively for the Wrestling Roundup show uh, where we talk about everything else that happened in pro wrestling, uh, including a pitch being made for Blood and Guts. Uh, not the Kota Ibushi one. We'll talk about that one as well. That is a big story being flown around by FIFA Select but a story that came out earlier today by Voices of Wrestling, who was then confirmed by Fightful, that CM Punk uh, pitched himself to be the fifth member in Blood and Guts with the Blackpool Combat Club and how John Moxley was not opposed to it. Uh, we'll talk about that. We'll talk about the Kota Ibushi uh, uh, rumor. Uh, at this point, it's pretty much obvious that their release partner is going to be Kota Ibushi, but we'll talk about that tomorrow on the podcast. We also will talk about New Japan Pro Wrestling's independent show, the two night show that they did here, uh, Moxley and El Desperado murdering each other again. That's what they do. Uh, El Desperado 
uh, might be in contention for the rest of the year, uh, just based on what he's been doing this year, um, including that incredible match last week against, I think it was last week. Whatever week it was that they had after, for whatever, yeah, I think it was last week with uh, Willie Mack at, on Ring of Honor. So that's pretty cool. We'll talk about the bloodline stuff because I know I took a weird approach on that, but we'll talk about that at that 45 minute segment between the bloodline on, on the podcast as well. We'll talk about Grace Waller and him being the thing WWE thought. Um, fucking what the hell is his name? Austin theory was, uh, and how, uh, he was pretty much put over by Edge. He came out and had his first match on the Mirror roster against Edge. So that's something very interesting here. We'll talk about EO Sky almost cashing in on Asuka, which they're setting that seed up. But we'll talk about all that tomorrow on the podcast. I've been Matt the Misfit. This, Misfit. this has been the Misfit Wrestling Podcast. I will see you guys uh, on, the, uh, on YouTube on Monday. But for podcast listeners, I will see you tomorrow for uh, Wrestling Roundup. Till then, we're out.